Yo, people, we're back. It's been a hot minute. It's been a hot minute? I'd say a hot minute. We've had this one in the queue and we're really excited to share it with you because it's a super exciting project. So we're working with our friend Daniel today on a project at his house, a plaster project. We've known Daniel for like ever. So this is kind of a fun project for us to do to help out on. So Daniel and his partner, Jake, they have a house in Tacoma, which is about 30 minutes south of Seattle, which is where we are at. So that's where we're headed today. They have an Instagram channel for their house called our house on Verde. So we'll link that down below. You should definitely check it out because they've been doing a lot of cool projects. Yeah, I think this is gonna be a super fun one for you guys. Plaster, there's plaster hoods, cool kitchen design. So if you're just looking for inspo or here for plaster, I think this is gonna be a great video for you guys. Most importantly, we are back. So I mean, you know, thumbs up for that. Come in, come in, come in. Good, how are you guys doing? <laughs> so much love. So, uh, we are here at Daniel's house, uh, ready to do the plaster project for his kitchen. Daniel, this is super fun to work with you because we've been friends for a long time. Oh, so. we're so excited. This is gonna, uh, yeah. And your house is beautiful. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about uh, what you guys are doing, the house. Jake and I purchased this house almost a year ago and we've kind of slowly been doing as much of the work as we can ourselves. It's a 1909 house, so there's lots of lots of things that need addressing that aren't aesthetic, so we've made our way through most of those, like plumbing and electrical, and now we get to do some more of the, the fun stuff, like kitchen design and, and plaster. So we're super excited to work with Blake and Melanie. Okay, let's, uh, let's go check out the kitchen and see what we're working with. Alrighty, so here's where we are currently with, okay. with Project yeah. Kitchens. We were here when it was down at the studs, so it's come a long way. Uh, so you guys have done really just everything in here. Yeah, we, um, we're trying to keep all the, as much of the original plaster, lath and plaster in the house as we could. This is one of the rooms that we had to gut completely because we had extensive electrical to do in here. So we kind of had to rip it all down to the studs and now we're we're back to having walls, so. So we're gonna be applying some Marmite KS in here. Um, if you're new to the channel, we've talked about this before, but uh, just a quick overview. Marmite KS is a matte Venetian plaster, kind of a matte satin Venetian plaster, depending on how you apply it. A um, little bit coarser, has uh, marble dust in it, so it kind of has that little bit of sheen there. So we're gonna be kind of doing this top half of the kitchen here, as well as the kitchen hood. So our steps for today's project are gonna to be to kind of prime the wall. We have this primer called Quartz Primer, which allows it just to kind of have a little bit of grit on the wall. Next step would be to apply our first coat of Venetian plaster as the base, and then our second coat, which would be our final coat um, that will burnish. And then since it's a kitchen, we're gonna add a little bit extra protection to this in the sealing process. We have a, a product called Aqua de Vertro, which is um, makes the plaster a little bit more hydrophobic. It's not gonna be waterproof, but um, it'll allow you to wipe it off a little bit easier, as well as put some um, protection soap on it, which is essentially just soap. I'm sure people are gonna ask, the color <laughs> of the plaster is uh, Sherwin-Williams Nuance. We'll, uh, we'll put the color below. We get a lot of questions about colors. So a uh, big shout out to Frenzy Color for uh, giving us the plaster for this project. They are our favorite uh, Venetian plaster company. Products will be linked below if you are interested in purchasing any of them. Uh, if you guys wanna make a purchase, are interested in making an order, uh, you can use AFI10 uh, as a code and that'll get 10% off your order. Let's prime this up. So we're just currently applying the coarse primer. Uh, coarse primer is just a primer with a little bit of aggregate in it, and it's very fine aggregate. And what that does is it'll coat your wall with just this fine texture because when you apply the Venetian plaster, uh, as that dries, it'll shrink just slightly, and then that uh, coarse primer gives it something to kind of latch onto. Here's Millie. She's come to give me licks on my face. So quickly, just wanted to go over what we are going to be using for the actual plastering of this project. Two tools you'll obviously really want to uh, have are your trowels. We have an application trowel as well as a finishing trowel. So the application trowel is usually a little bit bigger, 
Um, this one's the x which just means that it's been treated for lighter Venetian plasters, won't leave those black marks. So um, again, if you're interested in these types of products, they'll be listed below. And then you'll need some just kind of some small knives. These are good for getting product out of the bucket as well as just getting in those tighter spots that a trowel can't fit in. We have tape, we're gonna tape stuff off and also we're gonna mix up our plaster beforehand. I always recommend you mix your plaster before using it just to kind of make sure the consistency is back to kind of normal. Just make sure it's even. If you get it tinted to a color that those are mixed in. We're gonna go ahead and tape this off and then do our first coat. So let's get to it. What we are working on now is the first coat of our plaster. This coat you want to apply not too tight, uh, meaning you're not gonna compress it that much. And we're just kind of working around all our edges and corners. Um, obviously these type of areas take a lot of time because they're uh, small and intricate, but uh, there's kind of no way around it. When you apply it, it'll usually be darker than when it dries. Um, as it dries, your first coat should look pretty uniform. It shouldn't have a whole lot of movement at this point. Um, so you'll know when it's completely dry and ready to apply your second coat when it kind of has that opaque, flat look to it. Um, there shouldn't be any like darks and light spots at this point in the process. So for second coat, uh, you really want to wait for that first coat to be fully dry. So as we're applying this coat, we're applying it a little tighter than the coat before, essentially compressing it into the coats um, you know, underneath it. So you're, you're filling in the voids of the plaster that um, was there on your first coat. So that's kind of what will make it that nice, smooth finish, if that's what you're going for. Um, it's similar to what's going to happen when we burnish it as well. We're going to be compressing that plaster back into the plaster to get that really nice, smooth, final finish. As we're going, we're, we're stopping in every every couple feet to, to burnish. That way we can still, the, the plaster's still workable and we can actually push it into the plaster underneath. So we're, uh, we're stopping every couple feet. Um, this will kind of depend on how quick your plaster is drying. Okay, so we are back. It's fully dry. Our plaster uh, has had the night to kind of cure before we move into some sealer. So we have our Aqua de Veritro and we're gonna apply this to our walls. We're gonna use a foam roller and then just a brush in areas that we can't kind of get to. So we're gonna dilute this product 20 to 30% with water before we apply it. Yeah, so Aqua de Veritro is pretty uh, liquidy. So. Um, you know, you can apply it with a, a foam roller, a brush, or a sponge. Um, so it's kind of up to you depending on your use case. Obviously, if you have bigger walls or large spaces, you're going to want to use probably a bigger roller. After this, we're going to apply some soapstone. Um, so these are going to be our two steps uh, that we're going to do in the kitchen here as far as sealers go. And then uh, this pro project will be wrapped up pretty quickly here. So and let's get to it. The Aqua de Vertro does go on a little dark as you're applying it, and it'll make all of your walls look darker, but as it dries, it'll dry the same color as your plaster was, so it doesn't stay that dark. It doesn't make it completely waterproof, so it's not good for places like showers. You're gonna wanna use something else for that, but it is good for places that tend to, you know, have the chance to have more water or kind of different, you know, things in the kitchen might splatter. On top of the Aqua de Veritro, we're also doing Forense's Protection Soap. So this is another sealer that you can use. This is just an extra step here. It's likely not 100% necessary, but we wanted to kind of do this two sealer process here. We've also used Protection Soap in other rooms just to seal. This is a great option just if you're sealing, say, like living rooms or just places that don't need as much kind of moisture protection. But here we're just doing it as an extra step right on top of the Aqua de Veritro.
One of the things that made us really excited about using uh, plaster in the kitchen is that we kind of get that old world feel. It, it just looks more authentic and original to the house um, and kind of blends with the other rooms nicely that have that older plaster. We really love how it, how it turned out. Yeah, I think the, the plaster, especially in this room, uh, immediately makes it feel like lived in. And definitely the way you guys have styled it feels very homey and uh, feels really nice. Uh, it's been a fun project and we're excited you guys now get to kind of use this space and enjoy uh, kind of the way our little part turned out. But um, you guys have done a great job with yeah. it. So. Thank you again. We couldn't be happier with it. If you guys want to uh, plaster in your own home or uh, buy some of these products, uh, you can use AFIA10 as a code at checkout and you'll get 10% off. Uh, your order and links will be below if you're interested. So uh, thanks for sticking with us for this one and we'll see you guys next time. Mm -hmm.